Hey everyone, welcome back to the Map Deck Classroom. My name is Paul from Map Deck Cycle Works, and I've got a video today about a set of wheels that we talked about in a previous video it's from a company called Percenti, based here in the UK. We did a video about some Zip 303s. We talked very, uh, talked quite a lot about these wheels from Bassetti. And today we've got an opportunity to look at their mountain bike range. And we're going to unbox those in a second. Uh, and the reason this is going to be a good video is because we've got the aluminium versions and the carbon versions built onto exactly the same hubs in a custom format. So we can do a direct comparison. I know that we talked loads about how the quality of these wheels are built. So we've got the the park tool stand and the tension gauge uh, and we're going to run up through um, all the precision that goes into hand building these wheels here in the UK and give you some um, give you some scope as to why we're big fans of these wheels from Bassetti. Okay let's get these box opened. Right first up aluminium ones. So Bassetti actually launched their new rim tape which they've sent to some. So this is the first time we've used this tape, so we're looking forward to giving that a go. If you order your tires from uh, Pacetti, they will actually set them up tubeless for you. And um, we've got some tubeless valves as well. It's always nice to see. Let's get rid of that. Okay, these are the aluminium ones. And the reason these are special is because we got them built up onto some XT hubs. Look at those. So these are the aluminium versions. So the graphics on these are actually um, etched in. They're not decals, they're actually etched in and then so they've got a much more permanent feel about them. Using straight gauge, two millimeter spokes, brass nipples, really important for here in the UK um, to help that prevent that corrosion. And also these are the, um, the DT Swiss uh, Torx nipples as well. So they've got that extra length to them, which we really like. And we've got these built up on the Shimano XT 12 speed hubs with that micro spline and this is quite nice to see so this is hand built by ryan looking forward to checking out your work ryan um, build numbers giving us all the data on here so we've got uh, the hub the spokes uh, using the sapping d lights there tension on the non-drive side 120 kilograms of force tension on the drive side 110 kilograms of force um, rear hub 80 130 uh, tension adjusted so we're looking forward to giving these a go seeing uh, seeing how accurate they are after they've been shipped looking good we'll also put them through the uh, the run out test as well so these ones are slightly narrower but let's have a look at these carbon ones so the aluminium wheel set interestingly um, is actually a little bit narrower than the carbon wheel set by about two millimeters on the internal so these uh, carbon ones we're about to unpack we would expect to be a whole lot wider let's take a look all right instantly you can see that width shining through the cardboard let's get these out nice to see the end caps on there guys thank you nicely packaged nicely wrapped up and protected just enough, not too much. Okay, and here they are. So the first thing that strikes me is the consistent finish in the carbon is really lovely. And again, these decals, they're not like those vinyl decals. It looks like they're, it looks like they are, they are raised, but they're not, you can't really get your thumb underneath them to peel them off like you can on, on some wheels. There's definitely a, like a layer of laminate or something over the top of those. So they should be pretty permanent. I'm loving the little, blue and red stripe. I think no matter what color your bike, you've always got the blue and the red compression and rebound levers on your bike and they just uh, they just accentuate that ever so nicely. So let's see who built these. These are built by Ryan as well. So interestingly, these are built with quite a bit more tension actually on the rear hub up to 140 kilograms of force. That's a lot of tension. Um, yeah, that's impressive. So using the same D light spokes inside of these look at that hookless technology super wide and these are actually quite a nice rough consistent surface so um, hopefully we can just clean up these these up with a bit of IPA and then the rim tape will go straight on we shouldn't need to do too much prep work on them which is nice again brass nipples these look like the 14 millimeters long nice let's get these in a turn stand and see what you think 
All right, before we get these intrudes down, yes, of course we're gonna weigh them. Let's get these in the scales first of all. So, carbon wheel, XT3 hub, sapping D-light spokes, 32 hole, that is exactly one kilogram. That's a pretty respectable weight for a road bike wheel, let alone a mountain bike wheel. Okay, front wheel. Let's just tear this. And that's 840 grams for the front wheel. So for a mountain bike, 1.8, 1.84 um, kilos for an entire set of wheels that are built this strong. Um, yeah, that's, that's impressive considering the width of these as well. These are, yeah, 42 mil outside, 35 internal. It's a wide, strong set of wheels, great, great weight. Okay, aluminium one. So I've left a little uh, paper tag on there that Ryan's filled in and let's just tear this. So the rear wheel from the carbon one was a kilo, exactly. And for the aluminium, super interesting, exactly a kilo as well. And I guess that's because there's not as much material on these aluminium ones. They're not quite as wide, they're not quite as deep. So to get the weight down, you're sacrificing a little bit of width. But yeah, you shouldn't notice any difference in weight between those two. All right, front wheel. And the front wheel, 840 grams. So absolutely no weight difference between carbon and aluminium. So why should you choose one over the other? Well, the obvious width uh, in the carbon, but also there's that much more material in the carbons. They are going to be, they are gonna be so strong, those carbon wheels. Um, they're almost double the price riding out on the trails until you're taking some really big hits you might not notice the difference but um indefinitely in weight and going uphill but i think you'll definitely notice that extra width when you get a tire on them okay let's get these in a touring stand all right this is the park touring stand just to show you we've got this calibrated with the uh the stand here we're just going to do a quick montage of us going through and um, using the uh the park tool tension meter it's going to measure the tension on the, uh, the drive side and the non-drive side. Just see if it calibrates with what Ryan's written on that bit on that on that bit of card. First test we're going to do is just see how true they are. So first of all, in the truing stand here, um, the actual dish in the actual how much this the, the centre of the rim relates to the centre of the hub, absolutely spot on. Um, we don't need to measure that too much because we've done the the the, um, the truing gauge at the start of this. These two little dials you can see here, this bottom one is going to measure how oval a wheel is and the one on the left here is going to measure uh, how true it is uh, left and right. Just keep your eyes on these dials and what we're looking for is them staying pretty still as they go through this. Now the two little markers I've put here, these are going to donate um, tenth of a millimetre left and right of that zero point. So in total, um, 0.2 of a millimeter out either side. Got a little little lump there, nothing to worry about, nothing that you'll be able to see with the human eye, that's for sure. Um, and this is so good to see. So I'd say the left and right true is absolutely bob on. There's like less than a tenth of a millimeter true in there. It's a little bit more on the up and down. That could definitely just be down to uh, inaccuracies with the uh, the carbon forming and stuff. So it's not some machine surface that you do. So um, this is this is fantastic. If you were to pick up any wheel off the shelf, um, I doubt you would get um, a true as good as that. All right, next test. Let's check the spoke tension. All right, let's come down here and see what it is that we're looking at. So this is the Park Tool Wheel Tensioning app. 
And as you just see, I've just gone through and just checked the wheel tensions uh, through every single spoke. And it draws this little, little diagram for us. Um, and these little green ticks here represent that they were in this 20% limit, which they all are fantastic, straight out of the box within 20%, which is, which is good. That's like the minimum standard, I'd guess. If they weren't at least 20%, then I'd be a bit worried. So but with part tool, we can go down and go, what does it look like if we go to 15? You can see here that we've got one spoke, which is a little out of tension. It was spoke number eight on the, uh, the non-drive side. It's a little bit on the loose side. Um, not bad though, not, not bad. And something in the shop that we can tidy up here. Um, and if we come down to 10%, you're just starting to get a couple of, a couple of spokes now just slightly out of that variance. And if we come down to 5%, yeah, we can see we've got well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight spokes there, which are just a little bit out. But if we scroll down to the bottom here, we can see the uh, average wheel tension. So average spoke tension on the non-drive side is 74. Average spoke tension on the drive side is 96. And the little tag that Ryan wrote for us is uh telling us that the average spoke tension is 120 to 140 so we're getting some significantly different some different different readings from from there but um but to be honest this is well within tolerances the reason we can check we can come up here and we can see what what the what the tolerance is, is for this sort of wheel so uh, we're looking at anything between uh, 53 and 173. So the, the average that we're running here, if we took these two numbers, um, added them together, divided by two, um, and then come up here, it's going to put us absolutely slap bang uh, in the middle. Whereas what they've written on there is the average tension 140, puts us right on the sort of quite a high side for a stiff set of wheels. So I actually prefer the readings um that, that we've got if you like that's how i build the wheel to be somewhere around here you just get a slightly more compliant ride um on the stiff side if you build a wheel too stiff and you take a big knock you do risk a little bit more damage um, from them but you do get sort of better acceleration and better cornering so we'll tend to build wheels uh, around here if we know someone's going to be really hitting things quite hard but if they're a racer and they really want absolute performance and don't mind too much if they um, risk their gear we can build them a little bit tighter um, on, on the loose side, you tend to get a slightly more um, wallowy feeling from the wheel as it flexes a little bit more, but at the same time, it'll be a whole lot more comfortable to ride as well. You won't get the big sort of sh the shocks coming straight, th straight through uh, to the rider. So all in all, as a off the shelf uh, set of wheels at a very reasonable price, I'm really happy with this. And what's on here is probably about 10 to 15 minutes work of someone in a bike shop to make them absolutely perfect. Well done, Pacetti. I am. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It's not exactly uh, perfect, but it, but it, but it's pretty good. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, as you saw, I probably spent about three or four minutes just tidying up that, that spoke tension a little bit. It was marginally out. It could easily have just been the, uh, the spokes unwinding in the post. And to be honest, the first time we arrived it, they're probably going to go out a little bit more than that. Um, also, it is worth mentioning that the, uh, the park tool wheel true and stand um, isn't perfectly calibrated either. So it's something that needs, needs to calibrate. So there is a possibility that it's out of calibration. But what it does do it is consistent. So even if mine's reading a little bit low or theirs is reading a little bit high, um, the balance of the tension will still, will still be the same. So it's, 
We're splitting hairs a little bit here. We're making, talking about very, very small differences. Right, the next thing I want to do, I want to get some rim tape on this. And I want to get um, a feel for how easy or how difficult it might be to set up tubeless, which is probably what most of you care more about is can you get a tire on this easily? I think we've already determined great quality set of wheels, um, virtually perfect. Um, so let's just see how they are in real life. And we're going to overlap by about, and with a sharp pick, just a hole. Only open it up to like the size of the pick. It doesn't have to be massive for the low ring to sit in. It all helps. Offers much room to play with. And look at this. <laughs> around 20, I'll take a look line the whole way around. So what I'm going to do is to hear if you can hear any obvious that all looking good. Okay let's get the front one done. So I'll call it a wrap. Just to finish up if you're looking for a, a carbon set of wheels for a cross-country bike or an enduro mountain bike I would really have a look at these on the website. 1200 quid ish you can get them built on whatever hubs you want. We've had them built here on the Shimano XT hubs that are super silent, uh, micro spline hubs to go on 12 speed straight off. Uh, you can have them built on their own hubs for a little bit cheaper. You can have them built on Chris King hubs uh, and you can spec the spokes as well. Just speak to the guys at Bassetti and they will hand build these for you. The rims, great, that deep, that, that 35, 34 millimeter internal depth is fantastic. They don't go too deep here, making the valves too difficult to fit. Uh, the graphics look, really well finished, not just vinyl graphics stuck on there, really well finished. The finish of the carbon is nice. Hookless technology um, means if you hit things really hard, <laughs> you've got less chance of, uh, of damaging anything. Tubers tires went up super easy. I mean, what's not to like, really? Go and check them out, setycycledesign.com. And um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.